Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our first episode, AI for Entrepreneurs, presented by myself, Ivan Lee Jackson, and my business partner, good friend, Christopher Lay. We're in the building. Episode one, man. Let's talk a little bit about why we're doing this. Well, I mean, first and foremost, say hello to the people. And then, um, yeah, hey, how's it about, going, everybody? Let's talk a little bit how's about how's it going about why we're doing this. You know, like what 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 led us to our <clears> here <throat> podcast, and in particular, AI for entrepreneurs. Yeah, so I mean, there's a bunch of AI podcasts out there. I personally listen to a lot of them, but the thing is, they speak to people more like you and I, more developers. There are, it's a lot of learning about new models that are available, best use cases for new models. Uh, it's a lot of the technical jargon that's out there, but not a lot of the podcasts that I've heard, at least. Um, maybe they're there. I just haven't found them. But they don't really speak to the normal everyday person who's interested in using AI in their day to day life. And they're just not really sure where to get started, what to do, uh, just really different use cases they could use it for. So here we are. So that's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> none none of that uh, little... technical nonsense that I'm really the super interested in for building things. To give y'all a little bit of background, uh, we are we started out in web development. We've since gone on to build multiple companies in the like web development, e-commerce, automation, AI space. But we're particularly focused on building and servicing entrepreneurs, right? Like we're entrepreneurs and ever since we started our entrepreneurial journey together. That's always been our, our market and our favorite people to work with in terms of like what we do and services we provide. So, you know, when AI came out, as with, you know, all the new tech, like that's kind of our job is to bring it to our people, mm -hmm. to our clients. And um, so, you know, there's a lot you can do with AI, but particularly we want to focus on what entrepreneurs can do with AI, both now and into the future, right? Because you kind of need to know where it's going so you can, you know, plan accordingly, especially, you know, so um, AI for entrepreneurs. So yeah, then uh, just to add to that, I mean, we just, we really want to help people not have to deal with the same nonsense that we had to deal with and trying to figure it out from scratch. Like we've already done it, we figured it out. So why not help other people skip a lot of the steps that we had to go through? So we we have a long a lot of experience in the web development AI automation space, um, but this is our first podcast. So I ask you all to uh, please be patient with Go us. Go easy on us. Go easy on us. As we put this <laughs> together, but you know one thing that that one jewel that I've always found as an entrepreneur and that I always share with other entrepreneurs is you know you always just take that first step, right? And and that it's like the first time you ever post a video on social media. It's not the best. If you go on my, I think I have my first video that I ever, or real or <laughs> posted on Instagram. So if you go to my Instagram, which is at Ivan Lee Jackson, scroll all the way down, you'll notice that the quality of those videos were nowhere near the quality of the videos like halfway up the feed. And nowhere near, those videos were nowhere near the quality of the videos, were, uh, you know, closer to more, you know, that I posted more recently, <laughs> right? So, the more you, you 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 work at something, the better your craftsmanship at it is going to become, and um, that's that's our attitude with this first podcast or this whole podcast series as a whole. Um, we really just want to kind of kick it, talk about something that we're passionate about, uh, something that it's trans could be transformative to or will be transformative. Is transformative. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go now and could be should be transformative to you if you're an entrepreneur small business owner coach consultant service provider i mean but we're, we're gonna get into all that so we've broken this down into three segments the main topic we'll get to in a little bit but for now let's get to our first segment which is last week in ai so chris tell me a little bit about the the purpose of this segment yeah, so and so really, we're just going to bring you some of the news, some of the things that are happening with AI uh, as of last week. And every week, we'll catch you up on what has. So, you know, next week, you'll hear about what happened this week. Uh, the, the one, the main thing that I want to talk about today in this particular segment here is 
Google being racist with their image generation. Have you heard about that? I did. I did. Well, it was like and, and not really. Uh, and I don't want to call it racist. Yeah, reverse racism. <laughs> yeah. If you, yeah, like it, it would only generate pictures of like colored people or ethnic people. Like you wanted a picture of the founding fathers, and it looked like Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, <laughs> you, you wanted like if it wasn't giving you like no matter what, even if you prompted it like make white people, it just wouldn't do it because. And I think a lot of that stems just specifically because they were trying so hard to make sure it wasn't truly racist. So they did mm. a lot of that back end prompting because uh, one of the issues that that I found so far just using Google's image generation before they took it down um, was, was it just it changes your prompt. And don't mm. get me wrong, Dolly and OpenAI, uh, ChatGPT, it does the same thing. But it, I, I don't personally, I don't think it did it to the extent that. Google did it. So you would tell it, give me a picture of a dog riding a skateboard. And it it ha- creates a prompt to actually use for the image generation. But Google programs so many guidelines and like make sure that every image contains a diverse group of people. And they were trying so hard not to have, uh, you know, just images that were just all white people or that set. And I think they went too far. And pushed it too far in the other direction where it just wouldn't generate white people. And for some reason, now this is such a small thing. The image generation piece of a lot of these AI models, including Dolly, like at, at, for this point, other than making a, like a blog thumbnail, it, it's relatively gimmicky. Uh, there's no true, like real, real, real good use cases for it. And and I think that right now their big th- concern is just trying to avoid bad publicity because people just started piling on. I mean, it's crazy because, like, in reverse, they brought in bad publicity. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, I mean, what they're doing there, but but yeah, they did it, and it's down right now. That they have it down. They said they'll have it back up in like a week or two. It's been down for about a week and a half now. I want to say. Um, my thing is so, as someone who uses AI, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Right. And so I don't, I don't, exactly. I don't like those. I don't like filters between me and, and the AI. Right. Like I don't want layers mm-hmm. between it. Like if I want a group of five white kids sitting in a classroom, I want to be able to type, I'm, give me a picture of five white kids sitting in a classroom and it gives me that or five Asian kids or five. Right. I might be doing a campaign in Japan. I need five Japanese looking kids. I might be doing right, right, exactly. In Nigeria, I need five Nigerian looking kids. I want it to give me. I want it to give me. Not only do I want them to be black, I want them to have Nigerian features or commonly associated features mm-hmm. of, of that culture. I want the clothes to be faci- like you know. What I mean, I don't. I, if I want diverse, then let me type in. Give me a diverse setting or a diverse group of kids sitting. Whatever you, you get, what I mean, like. Let me tell it yep. that. Don't tell it that for me. Like, I wanted to do Yeah, and I I, that's where I think they went <clears throat> just way too overboard trying to not get called racist. I, I think that's really where it stemmed from. They, they, were, uh, they were so afraid of it only generating, say, white people that yeah, but I, it, it, they, no, they, they, they just right? think like, too much, too much. Like, it's a, yeah, exa- like. It's like giving me a box of crayons, but taking the white crayon out or the black crayon out, right? Like you exactly. only draw, <laughs> or the white draw yellow out people the black from the Simpsons. It, so you gotta like kind of mix it together. <laughs> like it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So, but so and and, and yeah, it's. <laughs> so I mean, I, <laughs> I think they went you, too far. <laughs> yeah, like I, I think, I think, I was gonna say, I was gonna ask you like, how would you fix it? But I think the answer is really simple, right? Like just. Give us the tools. Use their API and pull that nonsense out. Right. Because right now, I don't think Google's image generation is available through the API. It may be. I haven't looked into it. But I know for something like Dolly from ChatGPT OpenAI, like if you tell ChatGPT to make an image, blah, 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 it it does a similar thing. It It kind of reconstructs it into what it believes is a good prompt based on its instructions and directives and then gives you an image. So a lot of times it also doesn't just fully follow your direction. So the real solution, uh, at least from a developer standpoint right now, is to just use the API. Take that piece out and you can custom program it to basically create a prompt that strictly adheres to the user's input. Okay. Okay. Let me, 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 let me back you up real quick. 
because this is AI for entrepreneurs. And the thing is, not every entrepreneur is a developer. And so a lot of what you just said has gone over their head. Oh, so, yeah, no, that that's what, guess, for the normal everyday user, just deal with it. <laughs> it is what you got to do. Wait until someone comes out with a tool that doesn't do that. Is there, out of, out of all of the AI generating, image generating tools that you've used, are there some that give you more direct control over others? A hundred percent. The ones, and this will actually be, uh, we could talk about this a lot more in our next segment, but the open source image generative models like uh, stability, like stable diffusion, stability AI, a lot of that, since that is open source, you can make it do anything you want it to do because there are absolutely no restrictions on it. You can run it on your own local machine. You don't have to do it through like Google's. You'd have to do through Google's Gemini chat. Um, you know, open AIs you have to do through chat GPT or Microsoft's Copilot. where, but stability AI, you can run it on your local machine. There is literally no interference there. Mm. And I'm sure there's a couple of apps. I, I know that I know for a fact, there's a bunch of apps in the app store, both Google and Apple, um, that use stable diffusion as their base image generative model. So you also don't have those, um, I guess, unless the app builds something in, you don't have those steps where your instructions are being completely rewritten to appease the larger corporation. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like having an operating system or a computer is like having like some the the computer maker build a system on top of it. Remember how those Samsung, those, those Android phones would have mm -hmm. like the core Android operating system, but then it would like each phone would have its own flavor mm -hmm. on, like stuff on the yeah. air and a lot of times like people want to get that part away like you don't want the the manufactured you don't want the nokia operating system you want just the regular plain android operating system right give me it's the base like that operating AI. system done it's kind of like that yeah. with ai is like you really in terms of having the most control over it and getting exactly what you want you kind of want to get as close to the source as possible without mm -hmm. Without needing, without without all that extra layers of help or guidance or prompt rewriting, really the corporate version of their like safety features built in. Right. Like let me choose as the generated. user exact exactly what image you want without the without Google say actually no he doesn't want a classroom with just five white kids <clears throat> really wants a classroom of like full of diverse individuals and uh, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Let me decide as the user what I think is dangerous. Like right. even like I know a lot of things that I that we're spending a lot of time on the images, but that's okay. Uh, cause another, another example, like let's say you're writing a horror story and you need to generate a gory image because right. it goes along with what you're doing. Like, it, I mean, I'm sure there's some reasons why people would misuse generating gory images, but the fact that these systems just tell you that that's that's a no go, that it's not going to do it at all, like that leaves that out a whole niche of like, people in the horror yeah. genre, for instance, that might need imagery for what they're working on. Yeah, exactly. Or even like video. So, so we're talking about image generation, and we're like video gen generation. So this actually goes with my last week in AI thought, which was um, Tyler Perry, uh, famous yeah, TV yeah. Show, producer. Uh, he canceled an $800 million investment in terms of building like a new studio because yep, he saw, saw that what Sora was is capable of doing in terms of video generation, AI video generation. Mm -hmm. So long story short, we're getting to the point to where we, we will be able to use AI to create movies from scratch, create B-roll footage from scratch, create like lifelike in movies from just oh, 100%. artificial intelligence. And in the next 10 years, you're going to be able to go to the movie theater and see a movie that was fully generated by inputting a script into an AI. You don't need actors. You don't need a studio. Like it'll, it'll bankrupt Hollywood. And so the, you know, like, but what if you want to do a horror movie? What if you want to do an action movie, a, an R rated action movie? Right. So now that's where those limits <clears throat> come into play. That's yep. where those like filters is like, if you're really a movie, if you're just toying around with it, just trying to see like what I can do with it, it's like, okay, yeah, an AI like that would be helpful. But if you're really trying to make a movie, a real movie that has, you know, good and bad and mm -hmm. 
some R rated scenes or whatnot, like those filters could be crippling. And um, even just look at the I, show, The Walking Dead. Like, yeah, while the yeah, primary exactly. thing isn't the gory of the zombie, like they're chopping zombie heads off. There's blood. There's guts. There's, but it's not done in a evil. I don't know. I, I, in like an evil yet yeah, way. Well, like it's a zombie oh, show. That's what the. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, the, the <laughs> zombies, but again, it's it's the it it's the Negan, genre. Megan, Megan, what's his name? Mad Megan, Megan, Megan. Ah, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that there, there's some, evil. This. <laughs> but um, yeah, but but the point is, like, with that particular genre, you you might not be able to generate any imagery or right, any right. Uh, video for just something like that. It's a, it's a zombie show. You're right. gonna have that. Yeah. Like where so they can't all be then, Disney zombie shows. Yeah, now getting to the source is like powerful. I think especially as entrepreneurs, which um we'll cover in our next topic, but like the closer you can get to the source of 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 of, of AI and the more of those filters you can remove. Cause a lot of times like mm -hmm. those filters are really just kind of guardrails, handrails, right? To the to, 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 to help the novice. So, for example, like if I'm prompting, I know how to, I'm real detailed in my prompts of AI. So, right. I want it to do exactly what I tell it, right? Don't rewrite my prompt for me. But if, but if I want an image, I'm going to tell it exactly the type of image that I want. I'm going to say, I want, right. like, I, if I want diversity, I'm going to say, I want two of these kids, one of these kids, I want them wearing this hat. Like, I'm going to be real specific. But a lot exactly. of exactly. A lot of a lot of people who are you know working with AI for the first time, they're just gonna say, "Give me a picture of some kids in the classroom." So that's where those guardrails help, right? Because it's like, oh, let me <laughs> let me let me fluff it out a little bit more and help them get them what they really want. But um, that's just one of those things, right? That, as you advance into it, that's one of those things. Like, down it's those, kind of, yeah, it's like it's one of those things with yeah. technology, right? The more the more guardrails it has no matter what it may be, right? Like the more guardrails mm -hmm. it has, like in terms of making it more user friendly for novices, a lot of times the less direct to the source or direct to the code access you have, right? So like right, iPhone, right. iPhones are really user friendly, but they, you know, historically they had a lot less options or, or root control than an Android phone. An Android phone is a lot less user friendly because of all that extra control, right? You could change the screen. Like now you can do, it's, it's a little bit more parody now, but you know, five, five years ago, you could like totally change the screen. Whereas an iPhone screen was just, you know, the iPhone screen, right? Like it, it, it didn't right. change. Here's what but, it is. Here's what you get. But the fact that you could change the screen made it more complex, right? Because people would accidentally change the screen and not know how to change it back. And it's like, I don't want to do all that. It's too much, it's too much control. And so that's kind of the same. Right, right. I think that's kind of the same battle or same thing that's going to play out in AI, in these different AI tools, right? You're going to have some tools that are more catered to novices and they're going to have more guardrails in terms of what, you know, how much control you have, but it'll be a lot harder for you to mess up, especially as a novice, right? Whereas like some other tools, more advanced tools for that, that give you more root control, to the more advanced developers, but you can do a lot more with it, both good and bad, and that that would lead us to a whole other right. <laughs> so I, I think so, we beat this horse uh, to death. Uh, I mean, now if we say that, the you know, open I won't let it use that problem. But I think we beat this horse to death for the day. At any rate, uh, there are there's like two other things that I do want to mention in this particular segment before we move on. Uh, and that is, this is specifically relevant for entrepreneurs because both of the, there's two new AI models that I want to talk about that are out. And this really is beneficial for entrepreneurs. If you want something that is very, very close. In fact, one of these beats GPT-4 or chat GPT's like top model in a bunch of different benchmarks and it's free to use and try. Um, so Anthropic as the parent company and their AI model is Claude. Uh, for the longest time, they had Claude two available, but they just recently released Claude three. Uh, they have three different versions of that model. They have Haiku, which is their lower one, which is more like uh, GPT 3.5, the base that you get for free with uh, if you use ChatGPT. They have uh, Sonnet, which is their middle ground one, and then Opus, 
which is their top tier, like large, large language model. And that's the one that actually in a lot of the benchmarks, according to them, of course, this is all right on their website. If you go to anthropic.com slash Claude, uh, this is what the, the data they gave. I'm not saying they're lying. I'm just saying I didn't confirm this data. Um, but in a lot of the different benchmarks, it beats GPT-4. So you can actually go to Anthropic's website and try this out. And then there's another one. It comes out of Europe. I want to say it's France. I'd assume because their, their chat bot that you could try out for free is called LeChat. Um, uh, and it's called Mistral. <laughs> M-I-S-T-R-A-L. Yeah, it sounds French. Uh, but what's impressive about them is now their benchmarks aren't as high as GPT-4, but it does far surpass uh, GPT-3.5. And they've only been around for about nine months and have only spent uh, from some interviews that they've done. They've said they've only spent about $22 million training this model. Now, this gets a little more into the developer end of things, uh, but for comparison... OpenAI has spent hundreds of millions of dollars training GPT 3.5, training GPT 4, working on training GPT 5, whereas they've only spent $22 million and are getting very, very close to the benchmarks of GPT 4 with a much mm. smaller knowledge subset. So the things that I'm, I'm really kind of paying attention to them as well, but they're another one. Again, all the links will be in the description somewhere. You'll be able to access all of these. You can go try these out for free. Uh, they don't do, they're not multimodal like Google Gemini or ChatGPT is, which means it can't do in the same chat window images, uh, things like that. This is, these are text-based only. Um, but logic, reasoning, if you're doing a lot of text things, coding even, they can all do that. Mm. So definitely, I suggest keeping an eye on those, checking those out, especially Claude 3. Um, I, I definitely think there are going to be some competition for open AI, maybe even more so than Google is. So now if you're an entrepreneur, definitely check it out. Like if you're not like, that's the best way to get comfortable and start understanding what you can do with artificial intelligence. Apart from watching this podcast, definitely go just play with it. We, we, we play with it for yourself. Like go type it, tell it to do certain things. If you had a book or a thought or brainstorming or some research in a future podcast, I actually want to discuss that, like just how research has changed. Like, like think about Google, right? Like back in the day, oh, I barely use Google anymore. Right back in the day, like that's kind of how Google got so big, right? If you had to do a research for, let's say, a, a term paper or a, a business plan, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, right? You would have to Google. You have to Google the the the, the whatever you're re researching on. Yeah, yeah, you got you got to find the actual specific thing or whatever, like whatever link that might have the information. Search through that page. Hopefully, find the information. Hopefully, it's not for sale, right? Like you'd have to. Whereas now, you literally just go on AI. You just need to research something, right? Like you can go on AI and have the research, mm -hmm. get the pertinent parts for you, put it together in in a table that you can then use in your book report. Then have it write your like it's. It, it, it's game changing, but you'll never know. To an extent, there's some dangers in it still. There is. There I want to say that because a lot of times it'll make up sources still, yeah, uh, even GPT 4, not as much as GPT 3.5, but it'll make up sources. It'll make up information really to just kind of feed the topic. But yeah. so, so you do, don't just let it generate stuff and then use it. Read it, use it as a base to start your right. own writing or your own thing. Right. But you'll never know like how transformative it is and can be for you unless you actually go just try it. So like like Christmas and exactly it should be it beats staring somewhere. at that little flashy little cursor on a Microsoft Word document going, Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Hundred <laughs> percent. So is that it? Is that it for last week in AI? I think that's it for last week in AI. There's there's a bunch more that happened. We'll get a lot better at keeping this concise and to the point. Uh, as we go, but like Ivan said, this is our first episode. We also we're ramblers. That's why podcast format. We can just ramble, and you can listen. You can not listen, but know, we don't have I, to do. Yeah. We had multiple points <laughs> that we wanted to cover last week. At AI. We literally spent like a whole segment <laughs> on point one. But Some images. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. That's okay. That's it's our show. People don't have to listen if they don't want to hear us ramble. <laughs> Let's get it. So, all, all right. right. Next up, moving on. AI. 
open versus closed. So this actually builds off of what we were speaking about earlier. A lot of people don't, well, so last week in AI, Mark, I want to say Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Elon <laughs> Musk filed a lawsuit against Sam Altman and OpenAI. They're the makers of Open of ChatGPT, which it, everyone should be familiar with. And the premise of the lawsuit is that OpenAI, in Elon Musk's opinion, isn't open. Elon Musk, just to give you guys a little bit of history, Elon Musk is one of the co-founders of OpenAI. The purpose back then was to, you know, build AI that's accessible and usable, you know, by humanity for the greater good. Um, Sam Altman is the CEO of OpenAI. They created ChatGPT, which they launched for free, which kind of really kickstarted the the AI evolution, especially among the general public, right? That was a lot of a lot of people's first taste of artificial intelligence and being able to just quickly go on for free and, and, and leverage it. And um, so there's a lot of debate whether open AI is open, is truly open, they actually, uh, or not. Elon Musk thinks, well, they had, Elon Musk had disagreements with the company. He left, he went and founded, uh, well, obviously he bought Twitter. Now Twitter has their own version of AI they call Grok. I'm not really sure. I haven't, I haven't used it. I'm not sure how open Grok yeah. is or not, but, um, so there's a lot of debate, right? Is open AI, is chat GPT, the product they created, like, are they open source? um or closed and then the other question is what is open what is closed right because we, we as developers we know what it means to us but you know general public chris can you kind of try to give like a, a general public explanation in terms of like open close because we hear that a lot like in software like open closed software uh but I don't think the general public really has a full understanding of those two concepts. Uh, I mean, the most that? simplistic explanation is you have to pay to use it. Um, so OpenAI, ChatGPT, for example, while yes, they have a free model, the only way to use ChatGPT and access that language model is through the OpenAI servers, be it through their ChatGPT platform or through their API, but you're still making requests out to their servers. Then you have uh, Meta, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. He's got a model, an LLM, that's called Llama 2 right now. Three he's working on. Uh, but Llama 2 is a true open source model. So uh, I, he has some APIs that you could use and you could pay for if you don't want to develop on them. But I could download the actual entire model for Llama 2, and I can post it on my own servers and send my own request to that server so it doesn't, I don't have to pay Meta to use it. I can then further train that model. I can update the model. I can change the model. I have full access, soup to nuts, of, of to their entire model to do what I please with it. That's open. I don't have to, I, I, you don't have to pay for it at all. You can literally right now go on Meta's, uh, I forget the URL, but you can go to Meta right now. You could find the code for Llama 2. I think you can get it on GitHub. And you can just download it all and do what you need to do with it. That's open. Okay. You cannot do that with something like OpenAI or Google Gemini. Although Google does have a few models, not like their Gemini Pro or Extreme or whatever version of the their Gemini they have now, but they do have a couple of open source models as well. OpenAI does not. Okay. Okay. So what do you think in terms of like just that lawsuit and, you know, is open AI fulfilling their mission in a sense, or do you think there's merit? See, no, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't read too much into it because in some cases I've seen people kind of analyze it as he's angry that it's not open. Um, other analyses uh, that I've seen of that particular lawsuit is he's angry because their main mission was to only for the betterment of humanity, not profit. Whereas what, where the, the primary premise of the case is, well, they're not doing that. They are like, they have to make profit to continue to function. So they're not in turn, you know, they're chasing profit. They're not chasing the betterment of humanity anymore. 
They're trying to put out things that are going to make them more money because of specifically their deal with Microsoft uh, was mentioned in the lawsuit. See, I'm, I'm of two minds because on, on one hand, um, they, they, they brought it to the forefront and it costs money to create AI. Do that. Train to do that. And granted, exactly. Elon Musk gave them a bunch of it, but it, it runs is, out but... pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, but you're um, not making any. But, 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 but just, you know, you, you do have to like, like, I like using AI. I uh-huh. need AI at this point, right? Like it's built so deeply into oh, like my so life and what I do. And if it wasn't for open AI, if it wasn't for chat GPT or just being able to like, obviously we use it when we're like through multiple of our companies and our products, uh, we yeah. have, Mm -hmm. tools which uses it um so like the fact that it they made it so available that they brought it to the wider conscious of the general public that they were they were the first they were the first right and then they also made it they were they were the first to make it real easy for companies like us or for developers such as us Mm -hmm. to be able to tap in via api and create our own versions of, of AI and tailor that a bunch AI. of our products like, wouldn't exist without it. Exactly. Like, 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 like we were able to take their AI and then tailor it for entrepreneurs. Right. And mm-hmm. then prompt it and build specific AI tools, AI tools specifically tailored for entrepreneurs. Right. And like, we couldn't exactly do that before that, right. Before open AI. So in my set, in my mind, they opened it up to the public and to like, you know, companies and entrepreneurs, developers such as us to be able to like really leverage AI and, and the pricing isn't but that to be crazy. Fair, we pay for it. We but get, and that, that, that depends. You, uh, the it depends on the model like you're using. Depends but, on the but, model you're using. Yeah. But like, even just from, like, for example, for example, for example, we, we have a, for twenty dollars, you can get access to our AI tools. Twenty dollars, twenty-five, twenty-five dollars a month, right? <laughs> twenty-five dollars yes. a month, you get access to our AI tools—a whole suite of, of of AI tools specifically tailored for entrepreneurs. So you got email email creation, um, research, idea creator, multiple assistants, legal assistant, marketing assistant. Um, I mean, just a plethora of tools, AI tools built specifically for entrepreneurs, right? Think before AI, how much access to something like that would have cost or before AI, before a- open AI, AI came out with what they came out with, how much you in your mind would have thought something like that would cost, you know, a company, right? Like you would think with all, all that right, comparably. Power, Comparably, yes, it is much cheaper than using like an IBM Watson Enterprise AI that's been around for quite some time, but only accessible to people with hundreds of thousands of dollars in spend. So comparably, yes, yeah, much cheaper. Yeah, like, think about it. Like you would, you, you would think that would like like to get that before we knew what the prices were for open AI, before all that was brought to the forefront at like at that level, like that that before that access was enabled to the wider public. And, and, and developers, like, you would have think, like, that's going to cost a lot of money to be able to do all this stuff. If you showed somebody the optimized AI tools, right, two years ago, you would think that's like, oh, man, I, like, to do all this, like, for my business, like, literally, like, be able to... Just think about how much money we've paid copywriters over the years that we don't need to pay anymore. Thousands and thousands of dollars saved just by having access to these tools. Yeah, I can instantaneously create a seven email nurture campaign for whatever marketing campaign or instantaneously create web page copy or instantaneously write an ebook, instantaneously mm-hmm. put together a marketing plan. Think of all the marketing people we paid over the years. <laughs> instantaneously create a sales. Oh, plan. exactly. Instantaneously, like, well, yeah, the funny man. part is I still like you say instantaneously, but when it takes like a minute to generate something, I get angry. I'm like, how could this be taking so long? (laughs) (laughs) 
No, nah, I um, I, I have that built in. Like I have like a little, cause I have ADD, so I um, I, I put, I'll, I'll type in a prompt and then go for a little quick walk. Come back. It's done. Uh, see, I'm typically trying to do 30 things at once. So I like, I want this instantaneously so I can do this to get to the next right, thing. And right, 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 I mean, right, hence right. I have like 38 monitors in front of me so I could see everything all at the same time. I got that uh, Tony Stark thing going on over here. I, I don't like that one turning my head too much. I think another, th- another point we should make before we wrap up the open verse close is that kind of goes back to what we we're talking about earlier in terms of having just direct access to to the AI or to that technology versus a more closed, <laughs> guided, handheld access, right? So, like when I think, when I think like when I think closed, like again, I, I get the 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 real definition. I'm I'm thinking more mm-hmm. like in terms of like as an end user, like as someone who's using this technology, trying to build, you know, run it for my business and whatnot. I think like. Like does does Bing does Bing have like its own separate chat, like its own thing? Why not? That's open AI, right? Copilot. Yeah, it's Copilot. it uses um, uh, Microsoft's Copilot, which is yeah, ran yeah, yeah, yeah. off of OpenAI. I'm thinking like like I think like API, right? I think like if I can tap into the API, meaning directly to the just I can speak directly to the AI without intermediary right and then, yeah exactly like to me that's more powerful right like i can do more with that but, but. I, also get closed, I also get the guided approach right like because as, again as a as a as an entrepreneur a lot of times we don't want that a lot of times we want we want to get what we want as soon as possible as fast and as efficiently as possible with with, with, with mm-hmm. the least amount of work right so me being a developer, if I want to create an email campaign, a seven-day email nurture campaign, me as a developer who programs AI, of course, I want to be able to speak directly to that AI. And I want to tell it exactly what I want. I want to tell the tone of the email, the, 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 the nature of the email, all the different things that go into like making the email the way I want it. But if you're just like a, a regular nine to four, busy entrepreneur, right? Let's say you're selling clothes you're selling clothes online right Mm -hmm. you don't have time to go learn how to prompt ai and how to get the perfect you know tone and all that stuff you don't have time for all that so for them they might just want to be able to go to a tool such as an optimized ai where you can just the the email uh the email assistant or the marketing assistant Mm -hmm. or the email creation tool and just click a couple of drop downs like "I, i want seven emails i want the tone to be this i want the subject of the emails to be this, and here's a little bit of information to work with, go, right? Like they don't want to have to figure it all out. So right, right, right. At first glance, you can at first glance, one might say, like, oh, I just want open source everything, but you're not really appreciating the value and the benefit of that more handheld, guided, closed approach way. Right. Sometimes that walled garden, there's a reason iPhones and Apple has dominated the computing market for, for mm-hmm. years now. They have a walled garden, that, that walled garden yep, yep. approach, right? Whereas, whereas with a Microsoft computer or an Android phone, you have so much more control over what you can do, but it also leads to more complications. Whereas with Apple, it's a much more guided path. There's a lot less in terms of what you can do, especially customizing it and, and root control. But your mama can use it, your uncle can use it, your grandpa can use it. Like, you know, sometimes that guided approach is the more efficient approach for the general public. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, because you also have to think like the more open, you need a certain set of skills. Like to use Llama 2, you can't just go to their website and pay them 20 bucks a month and have access to the AI. You need to be able to set up the server. You need to be able to distribute the model. You need to be able to set up your own communication with the model. Um, build your own APK. I believe there's some APKs for it that you can get. But again, more you need to know what developer level stuff. <laughs> you need to know what that is. Uh, yeah. In addition to that, you need to, uh, even with the image generation models, like I talked about stability AI and stable diffusion, Whereas if I want to use Dolly, I can go to ChatGPT and I could type in, here's what I want. Yes, it's going to 
put its own little flair into what what it's going to prompt, but it's going to generally, for the most part, in most use cases, give me exactly the image or very close to the image that I wanted. Whereas Stable Diffusion, if you don't understand the use of the different models, the use of different LORAs, the different weights of certain things, um, denoising, upscale, like if you don't understand the, the complexities that are involved in getting the image the way that you want it to get, you're going to get garbage. It's going to be garbage right. in, garbage out. Right. So that's one of the other things with open models is that it's great for development and developers to be able to innovate and do new things. Um, but for the normal everyday entrepreneur, it's for the most part, relatively useless. Right. No, I, 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 Until I someone know. goes and closes it up and makes a tool to make it easy for the normal everyday entrepreneur, like you were saying with like the guided approach to the email right. uh, campaigns. Yep. Yep. So, so I think that's a good cool. segue, uh, right that's there. I, th segue. I think that kind of wraps that up and, uh, into our final, into our main subject, um, which if yeah, it takes I'll anywhere near as long as our first two short segments, um, we'll be here for the next 40 hours. <laughs> No, no, we'll, I think we'll, we'll keep it short. We'll keep it short. We're good. We might even get this that down under an hour. Maybe AI for entrepreneurs. So how long we've been on, but uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so in this in this in this segment, we want to kind of break down AI specifically for entrepreneurs. We got we kind of were thinking like AI for entrepreneurs one on one, right? So like, just kind of give you. Let's say you totally missed out on what AI can do for you. You're an entrepreneur. You're curious. You, you, you've heard some technical talk. You've heard about some of the possibilities. But like, what can it really do for you right now? Right? So let's, 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 let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Obviously, there's multiple types of AI. So you have like text generation. You have uh, audio. You can create audio with AI. So like think... Um, a robotic voice or with good AI, it would be a more human sounding voice, right? Getting can, way yeah. better by the day. Yeah. And each day, yes, yeah, yeah, each day way yes. better yeah. video, you create video mm -hmm. image generation. So like creating images, scenes, photorealistic scenes, artwork, uh, graphics mm -hmm. that you might want on your website. I have icons. paintings hanging in my living room that I used AI to generate. Because my wife and I had a very specific like thing we wanted, we used AI to generate it in a like an artist style, so it looks like a painting. Went to a canvas printing site and printed it, and it hangs up in our living room. So yeah, man, like, I you can a, literally yeah. make artwork. I did a course. I did a well, I did a free mastermind, and one one of the the, the best rated or the, the one I got the most feedback from was a twenty minute class where I showed people how to create an AI generated image. And it was like a picture of a tiger or something like with like oh, I know what you're talking gnarly, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was like, it was like a psychedelic looking tiger. And then I showed them how to put that on a shirt that you can then sell like drop shipping, like an e-commerce shirt, like a print on demand drop shipping. I showed them how to do mm -hmm. it. But the point being is, yeah, you can design your own clothes, you can design your own images, your own logos. There's, there's, there's a lot you can do with image generation. So am I missing anything? I said text, video, audio, image. I, those are really the base ones. I mean, you could do code, but that kind of ties in with the text generation. Right, right, um, right. There's a lot so, of subset yeah, within there, right? Because there's a lot of subset within audio. Yeah. Right? There's audio, music, uh, instruments, voice, video. There's... Even just mastering audio uh, using AI, things like that. Right. Yeah, there, there's a lot of different <clears throat> subsections inside of those. But yeah, I, I think you covered the main big ones. Video, audio, text, and... Um, swear there was another one you said video audio texts and image image generation oh yeah that was it <laughs> so as an entrepreneur yeah. man like there's i mean just those four pillars or four 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 verticals is a lot because again there's so many subtext within that but like even if we just focus on text generation right like out of all three of those Text or all four of those text generations is probably like in concept the least sexiest, yet, but it's it, the most in reality useful. is the most useful, right? Because it's not just text generation; it's it's the ability to also comprehend text and process that text, 
and give you an intelligent, human-like answer back on that text. So then you start thinking about what you can do with that, right? If you have this really smart, think, think if you have access to a genius who's in front of their computer right then and there, who's really, who types really, really fast, and you can just text them and they're, and, and they're, they're, they're there to serve you, right? They're 100% mm -hmm. there. That's their sole purpose. Sole purpose, right? So you can literally text it something like, Give me a breakdown of the hundred healthiest ingredients in America, or you know, whatever. And, and, and it's, right, right. And it's just boom, right. So, like, you start thinking about things like that in terms of like what you can actually do with just, just, just text, just words, right? Like, and it's, even just having it review existing. Here, here's a, here's an interesting one that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago. We had a snowstorm up um, in Jersey. Um, I've been out in PA. See, so we, we had the same big ass snowstorm. Um, my snowblower needed oil, but I did not know what type of oil it is, but I did have a PDF version of the instruction manual for the snowblower. Mm. I didn't want to dig through that to find what type of oil it is. So I uploaded that PDF to the AI, uh, mm. one of ours, actually, Sam, uh, I uploaded it to Sam and said, Hey, can you read through this and let me know what type of oil my snowblower needs in mm. 30, 45 seconds, I had the answer, whereas it might have taken me 20 minutes to dig through that entire thing and figure out exactly that information that I was looking for. So mm -hmm. even just being I able to it. summarize large subsets of documents. Now, being able to learn, being able to learn. So this is good as yeah. an entrepreneur, right? Especially like, like, like you're an entrepreneur and you're a lot, you're going to spend a lot of time on skill development. Um, and so just take, being able to take a YouTube video, an hour long TED talk or whatever that video is about. And feed it to the AI and say, hey, watch this video or check out this video. Let me know the important parts. Summarize it for me. Mm -hmm. Right. Being able to just summarize it. Just, uh, the efficiency in which you can digest information is, is, is game changing. But also simpler things, right? Like we don't uh, producing text, telling it to give you written copy of whatever it is you want. So, like, for example, if you want to put together a contract. Let's say you're not, you know, you want to um, put together a description. You're selling something online and you want to put together a description of whatever that product mm -hmm. is. You want to make it sound more salesy, more professional. Like, just imagine if you had access to a professional writer. Just that by itself. Right? 24 every, hours a day, always available for you. Professional writer that returns everything back. Like, uh, the example we, we use a lot is, you know, we've been in this online marketing space for years. And... Not, not even that long ago, let's just say like two years ago, if we were doing an email marketing campaign or working with a client who's doing an email marketing campaign, we would have to pay someone to write these, this series of emails, right? That goes into that campaign. And you know, I can, that can be a couple thousand dollars. Also, you have to wait for the person to do it. It might take three to five weeks. That was the quote all the time, right? Back Three and forth, weeks. making sure things sound the way you want them to sound. Five yeah. weeks later, you get the you get the first draft. And now you're reviewing the first draft, and oh, you got some edits. You got some things you might want to change. The tonality might not be exactly what you were hoping for, right? So now you got to send it back to the copywriter. It's going to take another couple extra weeks, right? So in order to launch a campaign, an email campaign, it would take you know like a month or two to just have them write it all out for you plus a couple thousand dollars or whatever out of your pocket to pay for it. Whereas now, mm -hmm. just to say you're paying $20 a month, $25 a month for, for our tool, or you just have access to any AI tool, right? Like you can get that same seven day or however long email nurture campaign written for you within 45 seconds. Yep. Within 45 seconds. And if you don't like the tone or if you want to change something or if you forgot to add something, you can... After 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 it gives you its first draft, you can say, "Hey, change this tone to better match this tone, or to or let's let's also add that it's the Fourth of July, and you know, let's add some content around that, and it'll take what it already wrote, read your edits in terms of like what you want it to do going forward, and then process that, and then rewrite everything for you. So then, in the space of forty five seconds plus forty five seconds, in the space of a minute and a half." You mess around and have your whole email campaign, like what used to take months, weeks, and thousands of dollars 
is now yep. comparable within minutes. And Website that, copy. Website. Any, anything you need, uh, writing blogs, right? Like, uh, again, like no matter anything you need to create written words for, uh, you would either have to be able to do it yourself and write in such a great style that it, it reflected your brand, pay someone to do it. Those were your options. <laughs> that was it. You right, could either right, do it yourself right. and pay someone to do it. <laughs> or just not do but it. Now, a lot of people didn't do it because or of just that. Or a just of, not do it, right. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of work with a lot of like startup entrepreneurs and a lot of times they skip that part right they know that the difference between their business and <laughs> most other businesses is that the bigger businesses the businesses that you actually trust to do business with you know they're going to be there tomorrow right and the reason you know that is because they put energy and money and time into all the little things such as sending out those regular emails, sending out those newsletters, letting you know about different current events, different promotions that they have going on, right? So there's a certain level of trust when, when, when a business communicates with you that you, you start building like, okay, all right, they're going to be here. So if I buy something from them, mm -hmm. I know that if there's an issue or whatever, that they're going to be there to support that. Whereas like a lot of startup entrepreneurs make the mistake of just not thinking that that part's important. And so if, if, if you're a company that's not doing all that, then it's like, I, I start thinking like, you don't really take your business serious. I don't right. know how long you're going to be in business, right? If you're not regularly trying to sell me something or promote something or update me on some events or some news or give me some information on how to actually use the product to better my lifestyle, right? If you're not regularly communicating with me, then I don't know. It just looks like you're just trying to sell something every once in a while and hope you get a sale and... I don't really, there's no trust built up. And so, but with AI and um, with lesser extent automation, with AI and automation, there's no excuse, like especially as a startup entrepreneur, that you, you can make your company look and compete and communicate with its clients mm -hmm. and prospects just like these big companies, right? That, that's the... That's the game changing part. It's, it's almost like videos and movies, right? Like how we're talking about how you'll be able to soon make movies from start to finish using just artificial intelligence. And think about how much that changes the game for not the entrepreneur, filmmakers, right? They're, all, they're, they're entrepreneurs in a sense, right? But like back in the day, you would have to pay actors. And I say, I say back in the day, like not today, but, but you, you know, right before, now. <laughs> before, yeah, exactly. Before AI, you'd have to pay actors and you'd have to um, buy, you know, pay for the scene and the lot and the, the special effects and the backdrop and all that stuff, right? And like that, that's a cost. And so to be a real filmmaker, you'd have to go raise that money to do all that, to be able to finance yep. all that. You got to get a producer, you got to sell the script, you got to sell the concept. Whereas now that barrier of entry is almost like us paying for emails back or email copy back in the day, right? It would take a long time to actually find a good writer. We had to research and find good writers, then negotiate a price and then pay them and then wait for them to give them the results. It's the same thing with making a movie, right? You have all this other stuff. The person would be a great movie maker. You can be like the Steven Spielberg of his generation, but if you don't know how to raise money and you can't sell it to a movie theater or to a, a movie production company, you're not going to get the funds to make the movie. Whereas now... Mm -hmm. That same person can just use AI. They don't even have to go fundraising, right? They don't have to go do all that. They don't have to go sell it. They don't, like, like they can just, you, they don't have to buy a lot. They don't have to pay for the special effects. They can just use artificial intelligence. So think about how it's going to change the game in terms of creative people taking ideas that they have in their head and making them reality on the screen. Right, like when you, like when Tyler you, Perry said, "No, nah, I'm gonna keep my my almost billion dollars for now. Let me let me see how this goes first. Right, because it, it, it's <laughs> why game. have that whole production studio when there's a good chance, uh, you know, Sal down the road could type a couple of prompts into an AI and generate just as good quality as he spent eight hundred billion or eight hundred million developing, and that's just I the studio. The then you have the like you said, the actors, everyone else, like." Quick little prompt. I think that's the biggest takeaway. If you're an entrepreneur, like what you should really walk away with in terms of leveraging AI is that 
AI really is the great democratizer in terms of just business. I, like, cause like a lot of things that were cost prohibitive, a lot of things that were time or skill prohibitive, right? Even like building websites or coding, you can use AI mm -hmm. to code. Like you don't even have to code anymore. You can literally just use AI to do it, right? So like a lot of these things that, especially and more and more, especially as things go into the future, five, 10 years from now, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying? Like you don't really need to. So it's like as a business owner, a lot of the things that like back in the day, back in the day, a few years ago, if you were starting a <laughs> yeah, business, that, that's back in the day. If, if you were, if you were starting a business and you didn't, you know, let's say it was a business that sells online, right? You're, you're, you create clothes, you have really great product, but you don't know how to make an e-commerce website. You don't necessarily know how to do online marketing and create email nurture campaigns and do all that stuff, right? Like you could be a really great entrepreneur, but those other things had to be accounted for. They had to be paid for. They had to be budgeted for both financially and time wise. Whereas now all you got to be good at is what you're good at and letting just knowing how to leverage AI to do the rest. And that like changes the game in terms of people being able, being able to get into the game and, and compete with bigger companies, more established companies. I think it's, it levels it's the playing field a lot. It massively levels the playing field so people don't have excuses anymore. You don't need, like you said, you don't need that massive budget in order to do a lot of the things that previously people were just priced out of. Um, it, it just, it levels the playing field across the board. But then you also do have to remember while the, you know, the entrepreneurs there, we're using AI, uh, smaller companies are using AI. So are the bigger companies though. And they're going to use AI in a way that we can't even fathom using AI yet because they have access to tens of millions of dollars in compute power. And they're going to build their own language model. That's only built specifically, like they're going to hire entire teams of AI engineers. They're going to help them use AI on a whole new scale and in a whole new way that won't be accessible to the general public because they're always going to make that playing field as best they can uneven in their favor. So th those are some things to also watch out for. Something to consider. I'm looking at my filter. It has like my, it makes my skin look crazy. <laughs> why, why, what, is, what is it doing? It's like I, I don't look like this. That, I promise y'all that is like so, something. <laughs> I, that, that 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 is not me. But um, I need some AI to fix that. Like what was it? You're using AI to fix that. It's just not working quite right well. <laughs> oh, that's probably what it is. Like I don't know what that is. Do I look like this for real? Like, that's what I'm wondering right now. <laughs> Like, I, know, I left all the filters word. off. Okay, yeah, that's the that's the filter or something. That's but, the um, filter thing. <laughs> yeah, it does. It changes the game. It levels the playing field. Um, it's really it's really exciting in terms of like just the next level of talent. Like you know, our kids, right? Like, it just changes the game in terms of like. I, I mean, I heard something. I heard. Um, I think it's Sam Altman. And basically saying like AI is going to empower the world's first com one person company, billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. Right. It makes sense. I could see it happening. It's like, yeah, you can, you can be back in the day. You couldn't do that. Right. You couldn't fathom building a billion dollar company without multiple employees. Right. Lots. Of hundreds, I could replace a lot employees. of people with AI. With AI, like you literally can build. That helps. I could build my own AIs, but. <laughs> that's a different story. That's a little outside of the realm of the uh, just default entrepreneur that we're here to talk about. Yeah. <clears throat> so now it's just, it's just one of those things where it's like with AI, I mean, just again, thinking with our tool suite, right? We have how many assistants in there? I think it's like eight, eight different assistants. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Yeah. You can replace your accountants. You can replace your sales manager. You can replace your marketing manager. You can replace your, uh, data analysis that you could do with AI. I, I know we're, we're kind of running out of time and I do want to wrap up with something real quick, uh, cause we are just about at an hour and I don't want to go on too long, but one of the next episodes, I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about data analysis and just the immense amount of time you can save 
and the uh, the multitude of different ways that you can use AI for data analysis. So let's note that somewhere to uh to talk about. But since we are about at an at hmm, since we are almost at an hour, <clears throat> I want to wrap up. Uh, I want to I want to try this. So top five ways entrepreneurs can use AI right now that would be the most beneficial to them? Like, what are your top five? Marketing, real research. So one, research. Just being able to find information um, and break down the, the, and break that information down in ways that's applicable for them. Right. Cause like there's one thing finding a lot of information, right? Like you, everybody knows a bunch of good books, but you can use the AI to actually then read that book and then break down the nuggets of information that, you that, right, that, right. that came to you out of that book. Right. Um, kind of like what you did with the snowblower and the oil, right? Like just gave it the whole PDF, find out what was it? Oh, right, 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 right. Yep. Yeah. You gave the whole PDF. Yep. Cause you didn't want to go find what chapter or what section it was where the oil, where it talks about oil, just upload it to the, to the AI, let the AI read it for you and tell, tell me yeah, exactly. And, and you did it with, within a minute. So, so that, so yep. that, um, text generation, um, just having the ability to generate all that text. Again, that's every, every entrepreneur is going to have to generate text, right? Whether it's, description about your product, description about your services, proposals, contracts, uh, brainstorming, just, you know, just generating text, an like email, emails, nurture campaigns, newsletters, uh, thank you notes. You're an entrepreneur, you need text, right? You're going to, you got to, you need a writer. Right. And so having that is powerful. Um, next I would go with our assistance, our assistance. So I'm thinking like optimized AI tools. Um, one of the things that this kind of goes with what we're talking about with like the guided approach versus the more just open approach, right? So the first mm -hmm. couple things I mentioned can be accomplished through the open approach, right? Um, research, text generation, right? You don't necessarily need our tools for that. But with the assistance, you know, our assistance, they are specific tools or AI that's like prompted and created specifically for that purpose. So like, for example, oh, you brought it up. So for example, we have a sales strategist tool, a legal assistant, um, project manager. So for me, the benefit in that as an entrepreneur, since you asked, you know, top five for entrepreneurs, right? To have mm -hmm. access to this suite of tailored AI assistants, it makes using them so much more efficient, right? Like I have a, I can sit there and work with the sales strategist to put together a sales strategy. And there's so many different mm -hmm. things within sales that like, you know, putting together a sales script, putting together a sales plan, putting together sales goals, right? Like that AI is already trained on sales. So instead of me having to go into, you know, chat GPT or into an open AI where I have to kind of pre tell it, Hey, I want you to be my sales assistant. I want you to know everything about sales. And it already knows that. So as an entrepreneur, to be able to have access to a suite of those tools, right? If someone asks me, is it legal to do this or legal to sell that way? Or what's the tax ramification to this? To be able mm -hmm. to just go to my already pre-programmed legal analyst and ask that question and get a, get, a, get, a, get a better than vanilla response that if I just asked regular AI, I think that is incredibly empowering for an entrepreneur. Um, I mean, heck, just having your own marketing coach, right? How many, how many entrepreneurs struggle with marketing? To be able to just go and just ask a marketing assistant, which is already trained on marketing, as a game changer. Mm -hmm. So, generative text, uh, our research, research, research tech, we had uh, at custom assistance is number three. I think video. Hey, it did it again. Not, oh, the, oh, the thumbs up. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm Sorry, I, I, I don't know how it. Yeah, I don't so, know. Sometimes, sometimes like, it does it. In like little random bubbles. I don't even know what program is running that does that. <laughs> but um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, generative text or just text research. Custom. Let's assistant. go with three. 
I think yeah, those are good three. Yeah, that's a good three. So it's, and and so I'm going to add to your list. I'm going to add um because this is actually what I use AI for the most. Uh, brainstorming, having someone always readily available that is knowledgeable about the same things you're knowledgeable about to bounce ideas off of. So let's say you have this this thought out idea and you just want to like basically, hey. What am I missing? Am I missing anything? Is there anything I'm not thinking of? Uh, can you poke holes in this idea and tell me where I should be able to improve on what I'm trying to do? So a lot of times I use AI to just bounce thoughts and ideas off of because it's given me different insights and then different uh, scenarios that I would have may- might have never thought of, um, right, especially right, right. like. I can't just go talk to anybody if I'm thinking about like, hey, I want to create this new AI tool or I want to integrate this new thing or, you know, something that's more in the realm of like us working. If it's three in the morning, there's a good chance you're asleep. Uh, other people that are normal human beings are probably asleep uh, and don't really necessarily want to have a conversation about a work development AI thing. But AI is always available and it's knowledgeable about itself and AI in general. So I could bounce those ideas off of AI in order to really hash it through or think of things from a different angle that I might not have seen otherwise. So that reminds me of that tool, uh, the devil's advocate tool. That's exactly, yeah, that, that's exactly why I built that tool because I spent so much time using chat GPT for that. And I was like, I just want a tool that is built to do exactly this because I'd every time I'd have to like retrain chat GPT to do that. So I just pre-trained the assistant to already know that. So I could just start talking to it. Now, that's a funny story. Um, like, like, he mentioned he, he added this new assistant called the Devil's Advocate, right? Ethan. All these different His name is Ethan. And he has Ethan, the Devil's Advocate. I was like, I don't know if we should include Ethan, the Devil's Advocate, into our <laughs> suite of tools. Because, you know, the word devil and I don't know. Like, maybe we can, we can come up with a different name. But... Its sole purpose is trained to basically analyze what you're saying, analyze whatever ideas you, you may have, and poke holes in it, or give you ulterior, ulterior thoughts. Literally disagree with you until it can't anymore. Right, and sometimes, but that's helpful, right? If you're an entrepreneur and you're trying yep. to strategize something and you think this is a really good plan, but you have like that nagging feeling like, ah, something could go wrong, is that's a good conversation to have. And you can have that conversation at any time of the day. It could be three in the three in the morning. You know what? This has been nagging me. Let me see. I'll, and boom, right there. So mm-hmm. now that's, that's, a, that's a powerful. That's a powerful point. Um, but so 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 um, brainstorming. The next one is um, coding. I, I know we touched on that a little bit, but now so I'm a developer. I can write code, but I'm not like one of those super, super, super developers that knows every little bit of every like coding language. Like I don't really, I can't really write a lot of things from scratch. I could find an example of someone that's done something similar and I understand the logic behind it and I can modify it to do what I want. So using AI to help me create the base for the code, especially in more complex uh, situations and scenarios, it might know, let's use um, PHP as an example, It'll know a different way to do something in PHP script or coding that I would have never even found no matter how many hours I spent digging around the internet because it's not what I do primarily, you know, an entrepreneur, right. business owner, like, so using that <clears throat> to supplement my skill of being able to develop because I'm primarily front end. I can make things mm-hmm. look real pretty, but making things do things has never really been, been my strong suit. So coding is number two. And number three, I had it. And then I got lost in the coding world. So brainstorming, coding, and um, remembering things. The task manager to do. I, <laughs> I wish it would help me. That now that I still use my uh, Apple uh, Siri and Alexa uh, everywhere. They're, no, sh- <laughs> yeah, that's how you light up Alexa. Um, <laughs> damn, what's the third one? I had it. I had it. <laughs> brainstorming, coding. What do I use it for? I can't think of it right now. Completely no, drawing a blank. No, you images. Yeah, you do a lot. I, I know you do a lot with images. I, I, know you I do, I do, but that wasn't the primary. That, that that's not a, that's not even in my top three that I use it for. Oh. It's just one of those ADHD moments where where I was trying to remember it so hard that as soon as I started talking about something different, it just 
Um, but so we'll, well go with him in generation. Episode one coming up in episode two. Chris will <laughs> hopefully remember what he was the third point, and we'll exactly. And we'll talk. Oh, data analysis. Uh, data, data analysis. analysis. I already said I want to. I I use it so much for data analysis, and we'll put a whole segment somewhere just talking about yeah. data analysis. I won't even get into it now. Like, share, comment, make us feel all of the love. So we want to keep doing this. Please, thank you. All of that. Ivan, you got any last words, wisdom, any parting message? Leverage AI. Try AI. Just start becoming wise to it. In the wise words of uh, Wayne Gretzky, skate towards where the puck is going, not where the puck is currently at.